Good evening and welcome to Back Chat. I'm your host, Tim Madima. Uh, this evening we're chatting to Thames and Thomas, a sensational sprinter. Uh, so we're going to be chatting to her now. It's going to be an interesting one. Wait until you hear what she's achieved. 200 meter slash 100 meter specialist. Uh, we're going live with Thames and Thomas. I see she's in the building already. So I'm going to welcome her in. And then we're going to get going. Hopefully connect that we will have no problems or challenges with regards to that. Hey, Yo, Tamsin, how are you doing? Good, thanks, are you? I'm good. Let me just fix this over there. All right. How are you doing? You good? I'm good, thanks. You just can't complain. <laughs> how, how have you been? How, how, how is life? Uh, it's always what I Yeah, Alice is alright. Um, she's relaxed here at home. You know, you take it day by day. Um, studies is a bit hectic, but yeah, we're getting there. Oh, that's good. All right, we're gonna get started soon. I uh, know people are gonna be logging in and so on. But thanks a lot for for coming on with us. Uh, always a, a pleasure chatting to the athletes. You know, we wanna. I think a lot of people will will be waiting and interested to hear about your story and. Um, you know, as well as how things are going with you and so on. So I'm excited. I hope you're excited too. Uh, remember, ladies and gentlemen, if you have questions, make sure you send through your questions. Uh, we're going to take as many as possible. But yeah, welcome. Let's do a few welcomes. Uh, the Athletic Ramos says, welcome. Kinet Michao is in the building. Make so Bob, uh, welcome to you. Lamiz, Kamish, Kipi. Uh, we also go to Mwata, but what is Bidi, Bidi, Bidi. Welcome to you as well. All right, Timson. So I'm going to do an introduction now. Eh? After doing the introduction, mm -hmm. uh, then we'll get started. Just so that you will know exactly who we're dealing with today, you know, what you've achieved and so on, and then we'll, we'll get uh, right into the mix of things. Is that all right? Yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with us this evening, we've got Timson Thomas. She is, listen, hey, guys, listen very carefully. Eh? She is the African Championships. 4x100 meter gold medalist, all African Games, 4x100 meter silver medalist, African under 20 championships, 100 meter gold medalist. She's also the World University Games, 100 and 200 meter semi finalist, Athletics World Cup, uh, 4x100 meter finalist, two time SA under 20 uh, champion in the 100 and the 200, uh, World under 20 championships, 100 and 200 meter semi finalist, SA under 18 champion. SA under 16 champion, <laughs> world under 18 championships, um, world under 18 championships, 100 meter semi finalist, as well as the SA 200 meter champion. Ladies and gentlemen, Tamsin Thomas. You're taking <laughs> us way back now, Tima. <laughs> hey, I have to, I have to. It's, it's throwback Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you, I mean, your achievements are amazing because, like, you know, I don't, I don't think I've, I've come across. Uh, many people who won the under 16, under 18, under 20, mm. and and uh, and the senior title, you know. So that just goes to show, you know, that uh, you're on the right track, and there's definitely more to come, you know. Yeah, I think it's about climbing, you know, the ranks, like they yeah. say. <laughs> so it started from sub youth, and now yeah. yet senior doesn't go further than that. Started from the bottom, now you're here, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, all right. I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely impressive. I mean, yeah. And oh, since sub youth all the way to senior, you know, I mean, yeah, that's exciting. For me, that's exciting because it shows that you've got the natural talent and you've developed your talent well as you've gotten older as well. So uh, sky is the limit. Yeah, and I think a lot of people or female athletes get lost between the yeah. coming from junior into senior because... Seniors is a bit difficult because now Age. juniors you used to winning and now seniors you're getting you're amongst the you know the South African mm. space so lots the of hyenas. athletes can get lost yeah you know Age. and it's gonna take it's gonna take you a while to actually compete like top three with the seniors so I think a lot of athletes get lost in between that phase because now they're not anymore on the podium so Age. they don't stay motivated. Absolutely. I mean, we'll get into that as well. Uh, we have to get into some serious business first. We have to play a game. This game is called 30 Seconds. 
this game is important to us. You know, we want to see how many things can you name, terms and what's in the bag? How many things do you have inside <laughs> your competition or training bag? The record is currently sitting at 19 by uh, Justin Pauferman and uh, what's his name? What's in my training bag? Training or competition bag. Name as many things as possible that you have in there. All right, are you ready? Okay, yes. Coming to you in three, two, one. Mazisha. So I have my trainers, I have Vaseline, I have lotion, I have my short tights, I have my brief, I have my um, um, three-quarter, I have my my running vest, I have my cropped up, I have my license number, I have my yeah. water bottle, I have my supplements, I have my hair ties, like my hair Let's bands, go. I also yeah. have my um, my shorts, I, have, <laughs> I will have my phone, my earphones. Um, I have and time, lots of time, 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 time. Okay, not bad. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. <laughs> no, no. Quite okay. a lot. At least you, you're up there. You're top ten. Rank top ten in... Uh... No, but that's too many things. Because I know with Ari, he doesn't like to carry a lot of things. He doesn't like to wear a bag because his shoulders might get tired, you know. All the <laughs> technical things. <laughs> hey, this distance, guys. I know the distance guys only have... Uh, they, they, they're already wearing their kit. So yeah, they just I mean, have literally the vest in the bag and water yeah, or yeah. whatever supplements they drink. That's it. Three things. <laughs> no, you know, they come with that spike bag. So they just get yeah, the spikes and yeah. that's it. There you go. <laughs> Not full of that suitcase. Yeah. Full of I know. I know. You know, sprinters, you must have your bands and there's some foam rollers, all this funny hooter. Yeah, I know. <laughs> all right, Tim, so let's get started. Um, I mean, like I said, the introduction was already... It was a lengthy introduction. I mean, you, you've, uh, I keep on, I just want to remind like everybody, like those who are, uh, come on, you know, you've won under 16, you've won under 18, you've won under 20, as well as a senior title. You know, that, that just goes to show, you know, that um, you're on the right path and everything you're doing is good. Tell me, how did this journey start? Did you always know that you want to be a sprinter or did you want to do karate? Or did you somehow fall into uh, the sprint world? How did it start? Funny enough, I'm not good at any other sport. Um, I can just run. <laughs> <laughs> but I always, I always say that it all started on primary school. Yeah. Um, doing athletics so fun. Like you said, um, you asked me the question, did you know you're going to become a sprinter? If I think yeah. right now, um, 10 years from now, or... Yeah, 10 years. I wouldn't have think I would have become a sprinter or like a running. Like, you know, you use your legs and your arms to run. It's, it seems simple, but the training and the hard work that goes into it, hey. it's not actually that easy. You know, you're running every day. So it all started, like I always say, I always speak about my sister and my family. Um, um, my sister and I, my twin sister, Tamlin, we used yeah. to run for fun and we were like on primary school, you know, the inter schools. We were known as the two athletes that's going to run and we, they, it's like our whole school counted on us to, to bring in the points because with that time you run 80 meter, you run yeah. the hurdles, you do the 200 hurdles, that time there was still 200 meter hurdles. So you do everything just to gain that points for your um, school. So we yeah. were like, my sister, not even, there wasn't even boys better than us. It was just my sister and I bring it in the boys, in the points. So, um, yeah. And then from there, um, I think in grade seven is when I first made my SAT, not even having spikes, not even having, um, you know, know how to run out of blocks, those type of things. And then I think I got my first pair of spikes when I went to high school. I got my first coach when I went to high school, the sports school. Primary mm. school was in Piro, primary in Mitchell's Plain. And yeah. then also the sports school in Kells River. That's where I started with my first coach, trained seven days a week. And actually got to know what is training and what is lactic acid and all those type of things. But for me, it was just, you know, when you're good at something, you go from one step and not even knowing you're going so far in, in terms of your career and so forth. And I think, yeah, in high school, in grade 10, I think I was my first um, South African team. I think I won sub-youth that time. My yeah. first sub-youth yeah, yeah. for my youth, youth, youth. Sorry, I was youth in grade 10. So I've won my first youth um, essays and from there we went to Ukraine and it was my first championship, you know, not even knowing what is a, a youth, a world youth championship, but you there. So, yeah. Um, yeah, just, I think, and then from there, it never stopped. 
I mean, like you said, I mean, it, it's amazing to see how you, you progress, you know, from, you know, sub-youth and then also to be able to go to World World Youth uh, Championships uh, where you obviously did, hun- where you did 100 then. Yeah, yeah, just 100 then, yeah. And, um, you know, to be a semi-finalist and then as a junior again, uh, semi-finalist in the 100 and the 200 this time around. Which event yeah. is your favourite? Is it, is it, uh, if you must choose one, listen, choose one, 100, 200, go. The short is 100. <laughs> <laughs> so you prefer the 100 over the 200? I think I prefer the 100, but people prefer me running the 200 and the 100 meters. Oh, well, you know, as, as long as you, you enjoy, uh, you know, that the 100 will always be your, your little snack, uh, but you must keep the yeah. 200 as well. It's like in the 100 meters, you don't even sing, but in the 200 meters, you can still sing and you can hear the crowd and, and there's so much going on, actually. Yeah, 100, 100 is another, is another event. It's just so quick. But the 200, I mean, I think 200 in South Africa, even amongst the ladies, you know, I think over the years, it has been like one of the, the healthier sprint events for ladies. Obviously, the, the 100 over the past year or two or three has, has picked up uh, a lot. But I mean, like the, the 200, um, you know, if I look back at qualifying for Olympics and world champs and so on, it's always been. So, yeah, you've got a good combination of both. Uh, and uh, we look forward to see what you're going to be able to do, you know, going forward. Yeah, you know? and I think also now sometimes in the 200 meters, you will get straight to final. But these days, there's so many athletes running or female athletes running the 200 meters. Now, he semis and finals. So, it's, you can see by the amount of athletes that's running that is actually you know some people are starting to like the 200 actually yeah so, so tell us let, let's go to like the first moment you want to uh let, i'm gonna i'm gonna move to the youth title let's say the first time you won essays um as a under 18 athlete uh obviously that's like your first experience of that what, what is going through your mind like what are, can you explain do you remember how that felt um <laughs> obviously as a youngster i think i don't act like it for me also now it's the same feeling but and it feels it feels normal and i don't know but it it's i can i don't know how to explain it but for me i didn't know that time what is fast and what is slow you know um it was just about running and that is what yeah. i still continue to do it's not about oh i'm beating that person this person but oh i'm fast and so forth but it's just about running and actually just enjoying it. And, you know, there's so many hard work that goes into it and the feeling of, um, after winning a race or any race, doesn't matter what race it is, because mm. um, there's a lot of work going into it. So the, the, the feeling after a race, I don't know anyone can, I don't know how to describe it, but I don't think anyone can also describe it. It's just a sense of happiness, excitement, also making my parents proud and, everyone that's watching, you know, and the family. And I think by that time, you're also making your coach proud, so. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's true. Let's do a few shout-outs. I see Brayton Poole is in the building. Oh, Mr. Haland, Elric Haland is also here. Uh, Cornell <laughs> Fredericks, Cornell Fredericks is in here. Mama of Tech <laughs> Athlete is in here. Michelle Kruger, we've got Glenn Howard, Kelly Carey, Yam Kela. Uh, kicks the high jumper. We've got Hennes Zor, uh, Cabo Klopi. We've got Nilanga. Yo, there's a lot of names. Beatrice Lebuhang. Um, Kinnan, I've already introduced. Yeah, so thanks for joining in, guys. Alistair Blau, Clayton Grant, Alri, Tafufatu Nwaku, Shaka. Thanks for joining in, guys. Uh, it's a pleasure. We are, ch- we are chatting to a speedster over here. Uh, 100 and 200 meter. She says she prefers the 100. Uh, the rest of South mm-hmm. Africa might want her to be focusing on the 200. But it's up to her. You know, she she she, she just has to do the work and she can prove everybody wrong. Ofu? That's simple. Yeah. That was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, 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 so let's move forward. Obviously, you've got your first title as a youth athlete. Um, yeah, you said it was nice because you're making your parents proud, your family uh, everybody and all the hard work that you put in, you know, you get to see it. And then you go to your first international competition. How does, how does, how does that um, experience, like, add on to the athlete that you, you would say you are today? 
Yeah, I think also when it comes to traveling and those type of things, my parents or my, yeah, my parents played a big role in it in terms of teaching us how to be independent, you know. Um, yeah. That, that feeling of, you, know, you travel with a team, but it's still you on your own. You yeah. must know your way. You must know you must look after your passport. So those simple type of things. Hey. So, but for me, I don't know, but I just, you know, sometimes you just go through the motion. And that's um, how I actually do it. I just try to observe and I try to, you know, try to um, just to learn how to do things on my own. So by the time, you know, we go to Europe on our own these days. So that is always the feeling of learning so that when you have to do it on your own, you can do it by traveling alone to Europe and those type of things. But my first international race, I think it's quite, it was quite like intense because you see these people by like, who is this athlete that is next to you? You have no idea. It's not a South African. You can't say, oh, you saw that person running at, you know, this competition in, in Torio or so forth. Yeah. So it can be a little intimidating, but I, I also think it's it's better like that. If you don't know anyone, you can just run and yeah. just give your best um, in the race. And, you know, it will just, if you want, I think there will be nerves, but it's more a type of, you know, you don't know the person who's next to you, so you just run in in terms of you you giving your all. Yeah, now that's very true. You know, like uh, from what I've heard from you and uh, and how you you tackle things, it looks like you always have a sound mind. You don't like getting overexcited. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you just you keep it level. You keep it. Uh, you keep it. You keep it here. You know. Yeah. And you learn as much as you can in that, and then uh, from there on. You just try to improve and improve. It's interesting because you, you 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 said you're a twin, you know, and you'd think, you know, as a as a one half of a of a duo, you would you would be like uh, you would um, not be as independent as you are. But it's actually quite interesting. So yeah, but I mean, in, in a track and field especially, I think it's so necessary, you know. Yeah, no, you always need that. Um, yeah, like even um, athletics as an individual sport, you're not gonna yeah. have a team that. You're gonna have a, you're gonna travel with the team, yes, but you're still on your own. Each one is coming to do their own um, job at the end of the day. So you travel with the um, your teammates or your um, team managers. But I will advise anyone that's traveling with the team to actually just take notes. So one day, if you have to do it by yourself, you will know how to do it and you'll know how to uh, like tackle anything. Mm, I like that, uh, youngsters in the group. Uh, you guys need to take notes. Make sure. Make sure. Mm -hmm. Can't just travel here yeah, without thinking. Yeah? You must plan also, you know. So absolutely. I mean, it's it's interesting because I mean you're so young. I mean, uh, you know, people the way you're talking and the, 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 you've been on the scene. I mean, I've got if you look through your records, IWF has performances of yours since 2012. You know, but you only like 21, 20, yeah, 21 this year, yeah. 23. <laughs> ah, 23. Yeah, 23, 23. 23 <laughs> yeah i mean you're still young i mean 23 for a female sprinter is not uh is not nowhere near the the peak of your career so i mean it's exciting yeah exciting times so what, what did yeah, you say no. you've learned the most like in, in the in the early stages of your of your running that you can use now as a senior like you did mention about the transition uh, from junior to senior is quite a challenging one as well. What did you say were like some of the most important uh, lessons you learned from your earlier stages? You know, I think um, one of the important lessons for me is um, I went through the phases, like you said, I went from junior youth, sub youth to youth mm. to junior to senior. And yeah. my training that time was really, I think it suited me where I was at that stage, no gym. Before yeah. the time, no doing intense type of training that my body couldn't handle. And I think that's why um, it was easy for me to transition into that, you know, senior phase. Uh -huh. Because, you know, with, with, with females, our body can totally change in yeah. as we come, like we mature and those type of things. So yeah. I think my training really, if I think, if I look back at it now, it really suited me where I wasn't in the gym at the early stage. Uh -huh. you, athlete being in the gym. Um, I wasn't doing type of training that was so intense that my body would never recover or that would lead uh -huh. to injuries. Yeah. So now that I'm 
in the senior phase, going into the gym, trying to pick up the weight. Um, I think my body's actually just, it's, it's adapting to it. And yeah. there's no injuries. There's no, um, you know, that where you have to recover two to three days and you still feel like you did. Um, so I think my body's much stronger than it is when I was a, a, a sub-youth athlete. No, absolutely. I mean, I think that's, that's one of the most important transitions. Yo, gym work, gym work. You know, I, what do you prefer? If, if you must choose between doing a hard gym session or a hard track session, <laughs> uh, what would you choose? <laughs> I can but you know this. I told you. <laughs> but I'll, yeah, I'll choose a, I'll choose a, a, a gym session because I'm not using, <laughs> I'm not running basically. I'm still using my arms and legs, but I'm not like, you know, moving it like this. <laughs> okay. With and that, I'm not feeling worst, that lactic. What's your worst track session? Which which session, you know, when your coach, you get to the track and coach more is like, all right, guys, today we are doing this session. What's your worst session on the track? <laughs> I don't like back-to-backs. Back-to-backs <laughs> running. Uh-uh. <laughs> Especially if you eat chicken licken the night before, it will never work. <laughs> Uh, I mean, yeah. your, your tummy will burn. I uh, don't know. I had that experience. I you know think never again. You know what I did once? I went to KFC. I, you know, I don't like junk food much. So, the, so mm. when they they like, take something. I'm like, oh, let me take zinger. Or, no, not zinger. I said, let me take uh, dunk wings. Dunk wings. My hey, favorite. I, I pump the dunk wings. Hey, when I get to training, as I'm warming up, I'm like, no, man. Dunk wings have some form of chili or something. Yeah. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> try, try well, chicken those... chicken hot wings next time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Never, never. <laughs> kill and, and for me, when I when I have a tough session, I always crave. You know, your body always crave junk food. Then, yeah. then I I think to myself, I oh, know I don't regret it tomorrow. So let me stay in my exactly. lane. So obviously, like that, that will move us to like, um, you know, like oh, discipline and track and field. You know, like just to give an idea, I see there's a question as well here. I'll take it uh, just now. Um, just to give an idea, I mean, track and field uh, requires so much time and energy and it consumes like most of your life. I mean, every single decision, I don't know, I'm sure you like this as well. Every single decision in your life that you make always has track and field either somewhere in the back of the mind or in the front. Like what type of um, decisions, you know, you, what type of, um, how, how much of your life does track and field consume? Let's just put it that way. Um, for me, um, like I would say, I wake up in the morning. Okay, so, you know, the time you eat, it comes from the track. So when I decide um, if I train at 10, I'll either eat at like two hours before the time. Yeah. So I wake up in the morning, I'll either go to class and then after class, I'll go train like for like hour or hour and a half, not yeah. too long. Or depends on the session, basically. Yeah, yeah. So for me, I think what we do after training session is really big because that's when your recovery comes in. Yeah. So for me, I would like you know me. I'll sit, I'll lay in bed and study, write my notes, and that's the type of things. Oh, I'm not the type of person that will go find something to do out on the road and so forth. <laughs> so. Staying indoors, um, even I love lame and uh, I'll, yeah, I'll just make me something to eat the evening. Sometimes you get lazy, you'll go buy takeaway. Um, but during this lockdown, I think things have really shifted to like finding things to do inside the house and so forth. And because you're now not actually training as much as you used to, so yeah. now I'm trying to do different things, different things, trying to make food, trying to. Um, just also try to do something besides athletics, but also just also just stay motivated during this time also. I think it's it's so important. Like, I mean, I think for, for a lot of maybe athletes as well, like the, the whole lockdown period, it actually like taught us or taught most people, like you're not only an athlete, you know, athletics is something that you do and it's a mm -hmm. God-given gift and it's a talent and you can use it and you better use it the, uh, to the best of your, um, you know, ability mm -hmm. but i mean end of the day like you said you're a student you're also a girlfriend you're a daughter you're a sister you a friend 
you know there's so many things that you need to balance uh, outside of mm. uh, tech and food as well you know do you find that uh, it sounds like you've got it on lockdown because you keep it simple or do you find it uh, challenging sometimes no for me like during lockdown i i don't know i became a master chef <laughs> oh i'm not sure let's my you always are is but like i started yeah i started baking um cake and so forth you know your first time is not that perfect um but sometimes i do bake and it doesn't come out the way i wanted to because maybe too much of the ingredients so forth but like i've really shifted my mind a little bit away from my athletics in terms of finding stuff like um i don't know but like finding something else beside athletics but not also forgetting that i'm an athlete yeah of um, course yes obviously we never had races or anything to actually be motivated for so there's no way we can sit and think oh my next race or this for so yeah. for me it was about learning how to cook you know finding this recipe on instagram or on youtube wherever it is and learning how to make um either a butter chicken or a, um a lamb stew or something like and i um started baking also which i really enjoy now <laughs> You see, I mean, even at supper eating, you're talking about uh, all these uh, things. Eh? Uh, yeah, no, but <laughs> even my mind shifted this year, like in terms of if I want to do something, I'm not going to go out and pay for it anymore. I'm going to learn to do it myself, actually. And that's okay. actually interesting because, uh, yeah, I started doing my own nails and those type of things. <laughs> that's interesting. I mean, I mean it's, it's a good way to use your time. So, yeah, big ups on that. Let's do a few more welcomes. I see who am I? I see Henry Makani is here. Uh, Coach Bradley Agnew is here as well. Uh, Niku Merengu is here. Curly hair has got a question. Timson, we will I want to see your curly hair. <laughs> uh, welcome <laughs> to Brian. Uh, what is it? Brianlene uh, Felix. She's here as well. I see DeAndre says so inspiring. Um, London Joko. Welcome guys. Thanks for joining in. Johannes. fancy welcome welcome if you guys have any questions make sure to send them uh through we're going to be taking them there's a question here from Tim who says Timson who would you say is your biggest rival bam 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 for the athletics i don't think you can have a, your biggest rival like um there's always someone new on the block you mm. never know who's going to pop up so hey, i think know. you just have to plan and train like everyone is your rival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I like that. That's solid. I, I think that's the only way to cover the hey, next thing. And with said, athletes also they have the on and off season so you can never you never know when you're in good shape or when you actually not in good shape because why sometimes you can have a good season is not always going to be a good season. You're going to have your off seasons also. So so talking about like off season on season and that type of thing like how how, how do you balance how, how do you like you know some seasons just go well i mean if i think for you like 2017 2018 was very good years uh 2019 was also i mean a solid year where you won titles but i mean even 2018 in europe you were you were causing havoc that side 2017 2018 um so how do you deal with like tough seasons i mean like you said like coming out of a uh, junior level all of a sudden you being thrown in the pot with uh, some of SA's best runners and it takes time i mean for your, yourself i mean you're 23 now it took um, a good 3 to 4 years before you could yeah, let's say 3 years before you could uh, win your uh, another title as a senior you know how do you mm-hmm. deal with those down years um i think i have a motivation of not only my um family but also like to be with our and also a uh, athlete that understands that not every season is going to be a good season so we actually do motivate motivate each other especially when i have a bad race or you have a bad race we always say to like okay let's try to focus on the next one um we athletes we human we can uh, every race can be a good race or every season yeah. can be a good season there is going to be bad seasons that we need to know how to deal with it um mm. if i maybe have a good, bad season he's there to um and he's having a good season i'm there to support him and if i'm having a good season he's having a bad season he's there to to support me and um with bad season i always remind myself that um i look back at other races and try to um yeah. motivate myself to think okay but times in 
you did run time there. So maybe just listen to your body also. I think the body is also um, most important. If your body's tired, it's tired. No matter yeah. what time you're going to try to push, you're not going to get yeah. it. So, And also try to go back into the next season and try to focus on what you actually lacked the season before. I think that is also important for me. And also when you love athletics, you you don't actually care about if if it's a bad season or good season. You're just going to try to enjoy yourself with each and every race you run. Absolutely. I think, you know, like, that's that's one of, like, you know, the things that I, I always, like, try to remind is, uh, to remind young athletes is that, you know, you need to keep loving the sport. Yeah. Sorry. You need to keep loving the sport, you know, because that passion and that, you know, that hunger to want to wanna run and compete, uh, you know, just the same way you felt when you were in primary school where it was just about beating the person next to you. You know, you need to keep that innocent, but obviously use the experience that you've come with it, you know. And once you balance that out, I mean, that's, that's, that's where the magic happens. Because now if you go too much to the one side and you're too upset, then you're like danger robot, you know, yeah. that doesn't work either because then you become too tense and yeah. things don't go the way you want them to go, you know. Yeah. And then there's some athletes that make athletics say everything that is not the way you're going to enjoy sport. You, yeah, it's a you have to... You have to focus on school. You have to be a, a good athlete. And there's something like, um, if you're gonna get injured one day, you never know what. If you don't, if you don't have anything besides athletics, you're gonna have to have a backup plan or something that you, you know, that you can make some money out of for Absolutely. your career. Ish, that's the that's the truth. Uh, that's the truth. Uh, I see over here, Atletik for Amal is saying, which international athlete would you still want to race one day? Which athlete would you like to see yourself standing next to you in the blocks one day? <laughs> I'll probably be so nervous, but um, I think Alison Felix. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Alison Felix is. I, I met her, but like just to stand next to her and race against her. Um, I think it will be probably a nice experience in one for the books. <laughs> One for the books, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Kelly, Kelly hey, Ember is asking, what is your favorite track? What is your favorite track to run on? Um, when I, like, when I ran my first, like, sub youth competition, yes, it was at Germiston. So oh, I yeah. think Germiston is still my, like, ultimate track to run on. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now they're revamping the track, so you don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of tracks are being Germiston is being redone, Pilditch is being redone. UWC, oh. I think, has been redone also in Cape Town. Oh, is it? Yeah, so 2021 yeah. We've got fresh tracks. Hopefully, they are fast so we can hopefully, clock these times. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, ACES gets um, hosted on those tracks so we can test yeah. them. Yeah, well, I think this year has meant to be at Pildage, so I, I, I assume they will take it to Pildage again next year, but we'll never know. We'll yeah. never know. We'll never know. All right. Another question. Uh, with your time is moving. We need to wrap it up soon. Uh, your motivation. What is Thames and Thomas's uh, motivation? Um, I think all sprinters, oh, I'm probably, I'm not lazy, but um, my motivation is to know that I have to go train because um, there's people watching. Obviously, there's people watching when you're not training well or not going to training or you're racing bad and they know you, okay, you haven't been training. So for me, as, I don't know, since a young age, I've been training. So it's almost like it becomes a routine. You know that there is training somewhere in your day that's going to be training except weekends maybe. So my motivation is, it's my parents, it's my family. Um, I always say making them proud. Um, mm. and like I said, I already also we motivate each other to go train. And when we're training, we, you know, we go together. Um, and then also motivation is people that send you like, you know, these type of messages to say, um, terms in you my role model and yeah. keep on doing what you're doing. And sometimes you have these off days and then all of a sudden some, like a message pops up and Boom. it's like, and then you just regain that motivation to actually go out there and hop, 
you know, to go work hard again. Yeah. That absolutely. unexpected messages. Yeah. So yeah, here's another question. Let's wrap it up with this one. I also have it in my question, so we'll take it. This is from Sarah Kamish. She says, "So Tamsin, who is your role model?" Um, there's so many people you can look up to these days. Yeah. But also, I would think Alison Felix is. Yes. I thought so. I would have guessed that. <laughs> <laughs> same would... body structure, same you know, ev- not kind of your know, same events. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's someone that I look up oh, to. <laughs> so that that means we will be visiting the four hundred soon, Musa. No, I say it's same events, like similar. <laughs> four hundred is too far. No, four hundred is far. Same body structure, same events. So that means, hey, you need to start uh, visiting that four as well. Yeah, no, I'll visit them now and then, but not permanently. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tim. Then yeah, thanks so much um, to everybody who's watching and supporting. And you know, there's a lot of people that are always rooting for you to become a better athlete. But also, I think more important is to become a better person. You know, um, uh, what 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 message would you have for them? What would you wanna say to them? Uh, those people who are supporting you and always uh, backing you. Um, I would I would just say thank you because. Um, it might not mean that it, like sometimes you send a message and you think oh, it doesn't mean anything but for me it means a lot because like I also said at athletics is an individual sport so um, you don't get your motivations from your peers and your teammates um, you get it from people that actually send you messages and that is always supporting for you and that always always wants the best for you yeah. so um I would just say thank you. It means a lot to me. And even though it seems like it's nothing, it actually means a lot to me. Absolutely. All right. Uh, I think uh, that's that's it for tonight. I think if we take any more, you know, we're going to move into, I know you want to watch Generations or Scandal. I don't know what, mm-hmm. what you My got. soapies <laughs> is done. My soapies is done. Luckily before <laughs> the uh, interview. So. What do you watch? Bernal Landers, St. Worcester? What is Come, let me, let me just give you a secret now. All my soapies, man. I've turned our into it. He's before me in front of the TV before. It plays 90 days to wait. There's housewives. Um, all these type of things. He's there in front before me. Elroy, what's going on? Elroy. Elroy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. But thanks a lot, uh, Thames, and thanks for joining us this evening. Uh, I really had fun. And I think uh, those who are watching were able to learn and hear a bit of your story. Still a lot of pages to be written. I mean, like you said, only 23 years old, and you haven't, I don't think you've, you're anywhere near your peak yet. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of you staying motivated, staying in the sport, you know, keep working, keep uh, focused, and yeah, the best is yet to no, come. No, thank Yeah, no, thank you, Timber Five, and us, and thank you for giving the athletes the platform to actually share their story. I know there was an athletic first season, but... Um, you know, with those interviews and the sessions from the people that is tuning in, they stay motivated to go out there and perform next season. All right. So thank Absolutely. you for having me and thank you for everyone that came it's to tune in and so forth. It's a pleasure from Backtrack side. You know, we'll keep supporting, we'll keep watching. We want to see fast times in 2021. So keep at it. And yeah, all the best. Thanks to everybody for watching. We'll be back again. I think we've got one tomorrow. Uh, we'll let you guys know. Uh, so have a good one. Take care and a good night. Thanks, Tamsin. Thank you, Timba. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Take care.